Tonight's unsolved, a drug deal, a murder investigation, and an end of life confession. Lives lost, families broken, and nearly 30 years later, loved ones search for justice. THV 11 Sarah Horbakowitz brings us to Searcy, where police tell us they're getting closer to closure. Searcy, Arkansas, 1994. 20-year-old Jared Green was just starting out in life. He was always just so funny and uh, just keep you laughing all the time. He was just so funny Yeah. and uh, such a good boy. So he smart. really was a good kid. And doing what siblings do best. Our bedroom shared a wall and I could hear him giggling in the other room or you know, aggravating me, listening to music too loud. But Jared's mom and sister said he'd fallen in with the wrong crowd at school. He had no idea what he was getting into, really. He just saw these other boys making that money. We think he was probably transporting drugs. As time went on, family says Jared wanted out, but couldn't. Jared said that like they would never let him pay them back, right? They'd never let him out of what he was trying to get out of. Court documents show Jared owed $7,500 for drugs to a dealer. He was really, really paranoid. He told us that people were after him. He told us that he needed to get out of town. We helped him, we, meaning my parents, helped him move out of the state. A few weeks later, family says Jared got a call from a friend with good news. No one was looking for him anymore. So he came home and we were all relieved thinking, oh yay, this horrible thing is over, he's back. Until the night of September 30th, Jared had a meeting to settle his debt. Another person that we've talked to said that he was actually crying because he was so scared to go meet with this person. A friend told police that before the meeting, Jared made a stop, picking up his revolver. There was something at some point between Jared and this person that um, that scared him enough to where he thought he had to have some sort of protection. Searcy police said Jared met with the drug dealer and was never seen again. Another day went by and nothing. Nobody had seen him. We called everybody that we knew. Days later, family says another person in the drug trade told them they saw Jared's car in the Walmart parking lot. The windows were down, the sunroof was open, the keys were thrown up underneath the like the front seat, driver's seat, floorboard. Court records show someone initially told police they were offered $1,000 to quote, get rid of Jared. According to the same court document, that same person said the drug dealer and his roommate grabbed Jared at Walmart and Jared had been quote, done away with. And we knew that he did not walk away from that car himself. Investigators say 10 months after that, the dealer's roommate started bragging about being involved in Jared's disappearance. Shortly, sometime after Jared went missing, um, this other person went missing as well. Witness testimony described in court documents claimed the dealer later told the person he, quote, took care of it. The roommate was never seen again. And that's suspicious to you? Of course, yeah. Six years later, investigators reported that a close friend of both Jared and the dealer killed himself, but not before telling his pastor that he knew about two separate murders. We know that he had information about what happened to Jared, and he, he took his own life rather than share that information. This all led to a warrant for the dealer's arrest for capital murder in 2017. But ultimately, prosecutors dropped the case. This happened after the source who said they heard the dealer's threats took it back, saying he lied. Two other key factors, there was still no murder weapon and no body. There was some evidence that was supposed to be there that didn't end up coming up. Police would only get one chance to try this case, and the state wanted more time to find undeniable proof. They wanted to find Jared's body. Finding his remains will um, corroborate what we're being told by witnesses. Now, in 2023, they say they're getting close. The family and Searcy police are bringing in teams from out of state that specialize in this type of search. There are four locations that the search teams will, will look at. It really gave us hope for the, really for the first time um, to, that we could find him. But the details of where they'll look can't be shared just yet. We don't want the suspect sitting there at his house watching Channel 11 
while we're doing this story and say, oh, well, I didn't think about that. Maybe I need to go cover that up. The Green family's love for Jared, keeping the search for justice alive. Her perseverance, perseverance behind looking for Jared and finding Jared and all his remains um, is kind of giving us a little life too as well, seeing, um, seeing that from her. Hoping that someone will open up to close this case. We're not looking to charge anybody with any drug crimes, but we know that there, there's at least one person out there that can give us exactly what we need to put, to, to get Jared back to his family. He was a human being, a much loved human being. And I, I just really, as a mother, need his remains. It's a horrible thing not to be able to bury your child. Holding on to hope that after 28 years, they'll bring Jared home soon. Every, every single day we think about him, every single day, and hope that we're going to, today's going to be the day. Today's going to be the day we're going to find him. Jared's family still runs a Facebook group with over 2,000 members working to help solve this case. Many members of that group honor Jared's birthday this weekend by putting up missing signs all over Searcy, hoping someone will come forward with information. Now, if you know anything about Jared's disappearance, you're asked to call Searcy Police Department. We have their contact information on our website.